We as humans are born to be fallible as we're not exactly perfect. However, as fallible as we can be, we can improve those mistakes by learning from it and never repeating it. Organizations that employ humans are susceptible to this, but with proper training, structure, and policy, the chances of fallibility become less likely to occur, but not so impossible. The RPC Authority is no exception to this. They are capable of making mistakes. This makes sense if you take into account that the RPC universe and its canon are all grounded in realism. This works well when defining how the Authority works as an institution, as well as the world it exists within. When it comes to narration and writing, do you think that a fictitious organization should be overpowered? This question can be subjective from person to person, but judging by the trend in trope writing, I'd say no. Thus, the weaknesses can actually spice up a story of a character, or in this case, an entire organization. So, let me tell you why the authority having weaknesses is actually a good thing. Oh, and before you continue, just to remind you that most of the content here has been mentioned in the comparison video, but feel free to perceive this as a part 2 of that. The RPC Authority is a secret international organization that has been active for centuries. Prior to 1834, the organization was known as the Actoritas Imperitas. Its meaning is a bit debatable, but according to Google Translate, it means inexperienced authority. Yes, I use Google Translate, but come on. Who doesn't? Unlike the modern authority, this predecessor organization was not so powerful per se. Technology at the time was vastly limited, so they had to rely on whatever they had when it came to containing anomalies during the periods between the 15th to 19th century. But also, they had to endure the political and suppression of the church, but that's a story for another time. As the organization expanded and grew internationally, and when it became the RPC Authority in 1834, Technology and operational capability to contain modern anomalies became more efficient. However, by the mid-late 20th century, foreign interference became almost common. Various interferences include the major powers such as China, Russia, and the United States, and minor powers from terrorist groups to anomalous companies. There's one other interference that the Authority has been facing for some time, and they are institutions and government-sanctioned entities that seek to operate their own versions of the RPC Authority. This specific interference alone is more alarming as potential equal rivalries to fight the same goal can cause the Authority's legitimacy to degrade and potentially become illegitimate. This proves alone that the Authority is not all-powerful as an organization like, and I say with contrition, the SAP Foundation. The Foundation, as I've stated in my comparison video, is more powerful than the Authority as they pretty much have everything. They do experience the same foreign interference as the Authority, but again, ambiguity is more exact as a summary than it is as an explanation. So yeah, um, that's the only thing I can say when comparing to the Foundation and the Authority, but hey, as I've always said, this varies from person to person. Aside from foreign interference and pushing all of their efforts to maintain legitimacy and influence within an increasingly hostile world, let's talk about bureaucracy and budgets. Actually, you know what? Let's drag the foundation back here. I need to milk you out for content. So bureaucracy exists within the authority, but whether the foundation also has the levels of bureaucracy like the authority is a bit debatable. Bureaucracy is a form of weakness. In the case of the Authority, they have a high tolerance policy when it comes to security, information, budget, and most importantly, ethics. As per the bureaucracy of the Foundation, it's quite unclear. What I've been able to ascertain is that all the site directors directly report to the O5 command. There appears to be no form of regional oversight, but I'll be saying this with conjecture for now. But what about information control? Well. I like to say it's almost the exact same thing as the Authority, minus the fact that information redaction and misinformation is quite more significant than the Authority's authorization requirement and access denial, followed by suspension, audit, and interrogation by OIRS agents. With the Authority, funding is limited with test subjects restricted to a varying degree of application. This means that, unlike the Foundation, personnel can't simply enter a barn and take all the cows to a testing chamber and watch blissfully as all of them get slaughtered. Well, if you are a fan, you sir, or madam, diversity is our policy, 
are a fucking psychopath. CSDs aren't the only purview of concern when it comes to organizational weaknesses as other factors arise, including inter-rivalries from other departments that are fighting for budget cuts, resources, and even CSDs. For the Foundation, however, they don't seem to have this problem because, um, well, they don't care if they're wasting thousands as it can easily replace by their large income. So, why am I stating these points when I'm not answering the video's question? Why the authority having weaknesses is a good thing? Well, for context and detail what kind of weaknesses the authority is facing. But do mind there are other factors of weaknesses, but I believe these three have key importance. So, to answer the video's question, why? It's simple. Having weaknesses for an organization like the RPC Authority allows writers and contributors to explore the flaws and issues for a more interesting and dynamic story. You can't have a story or a canon where issues of such doesn't exist. It's uninteresting and doesn't fit a narrative of a world-building lore or a single canon policy. The Foundation is supposed to be perfect in every form, but in exchange it rarely ever talks about the issues of the Foundation itself. Now, I do understand and have stated before that there is no canon in the SCP Foundation. This again creates so many uninteresting tales of personnel lives. Don't get me wrong, but I do love the perspective storytelling through a staff about their daily lives, but what is the point when they're enjoying everything and don't tell a single significant problem they have with the organization? If one of their problems were bureaucratic incompetence or they didn't get the funding for the project, too bad, har har, that's life, nothing interesting, put it in the shelf. I've noticed a pattern of Foundation tales where the death of a staff, which is unfortunate, can be a form of impactful storytelling. Sure, that's one way of doing it, but when it is caused by a containment breach, then the Foundation being so perfect is most likely a misperception rather than an outright lie. The RPC Authority having flaws tells more than just one story. It tells you that any action you make has an impact on the canon, with profound consequences that can still be impacted for decades within the lore. The failsafe event does this despite the fact how many people hated it at the beginning. Because it not only cracks the eggshells of the Authority's image, but it also shows the level of how the world can easily turn against you. Now tell me, if the Foundation were to ever have a failsafe scenario, do you believe that countries would follow what they did in the Authority, or they would simply brush this aside? Whatever your answer may be, it will most likely be subjective.